welcome everyone. So here we are. I know it's been a little while since my last video. Um, as you're aware, I got rid of the R7 a few months back, went with the R1. And just like always, I can't leave well enough alone. One thing that drives me nuts about these bikes is the restrictions that come from the factory. Uh, if you look, that's our catalytic converter muffler box. That thing weighs about 13 to 15 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, we also got the Paravalve X-Up Servo. One thing I did just get done was the block off plates. You know, get rid of that emission system on these bikes, especially if you're doing the flash. You know, you don't need that pair valve anymore if you are doing um, a cat delete on the bike. Get rid of this thing. Um, you will need a connector or have your ECU flashed so you don't get a check engine light on this. But one other big reason that I like to get rid of these is the amount of space they take up. You know, you, you got that thing in there. Just doesn't make it easy to do spark plug changes. You would have to remove this. So we're going to throw that in the garbage. That's going bye-bye. Another restriction on this thing is Yamaha. What the, what the hell? And look at that. That's the stock air filter. That is insane. I'm going with a sprint. Look at that. You can almost see through that thing. And then the M4 mid-pipe. The unfortunate thing is with the M4, and I was kind of disappointed in this, is they, they it's nice because they do give you the O2 sensor bungs, but the problem is with the ECU flash that I had done by Chris Moore, the O2s are going away. So I had to track down some of those. I just found those on Amazon. They were 7 bucks a pop. The other thing you get to get rid of is your X-Up. So that little servo is going bye-bye. And just the amount of room it creates because it normally took up this whole space. Now, let me show you here. Just set that kind of back in place. Look at that. Now you got room if you want to run a secondary tuner. No problem. I'm going to keep the stock can. We're going to see how that sounds. Now, what's nice about that M4 mid pipe is it's modular. So if you go with that one, any pipe, canister, I should say, that mounts to the stock location will work with this. So if I decide I want to Go with an aero exhaust, a crop of itch. The M4, not really feeling it because it looks like a big old mega foam. But uh, I want to move on from that. But yeah, we got the block ops in there doing this air filter. We'll get the exhaust on and then uh, we'll get this thing up and running. And once I do that, I'll do a sound test, see what you guys think. Just the mid pipe and the stop. All right, guys, so one thing I did want to point out is with the old pair valve, you have this nipple here, all right? What that nipple does is actually presses into this fitting on the bottom of the ductwork for the ram air. Um, one thing you can do is you can spend the time, you know, cut this off, press that in there, leave it out, or you can just do what I did and just get a push pin big enough that fills that hole. Now, the reason I say you can leave it out is your air filter is actually on top of this. So any air you pull through there, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I just do it as a precaution, I guess. Um, keep water, whatever. I know uh, I'm nitpicky when it comes to this stuff. Got a, got a little bit of OCD. Um, and one other thing, too, is, you know, when you get rid of the pair valve, you do have this connector. This one will now be open. One thing I'm probably even going to do is I might... I'll take a picture of it, see, you know, from the front side of the connector, what color wire goes where. So if I ever decide, I was just joking about throwing this in the trash. I, I save all my stock parts. What I could do is depin this, um, figure out a way to plug these holes up here. And basically you're making your own connector to keep it sealed and keep water from getting in that connector. Cause you know, water and copper do not mix. So I will let you know what I decide to do on this one. Um, I'll also have to do it with the O2 sensors the servo that one might be a little tricky because it's pretty big so i gotta get creative with that one uh, i'll let you know what i decide and what i think is going to be the best way to fix it but i will get back on this and uh let you know if i come across any other issues all right guys so here's what i did on that x up valve i don't know how well that picture's coming in but what i did is i just used some old drawer liner for my toolbox that I had extra of. Uh, it's waterproof and then I just took some shrink wrap. So I cut a little piece off, 
wrapped it around, slid the shrink wrap over it. And this way, I mean, I could have filled the holes with RTV, some black silicone, but I'd done that before. And if you ever need to put this connector back together, it makes it a little more difficult. This way I can just pull this off, clean it up a little bit and put it all back together. Um, if you ever need to depin, you know, most of the time, I don't know if you can see those, but you'll see the little tab. Um, what works best to peel those up is a little T-pin that you get at any type of uh, hobby store. But yeah, you just pull up those locking tabs. Let me see if I can get this to focus. And then just gently pull the wire out. So now I got my own plug. That'll keep that uh, that connector dry. And then i got to figure out what I'm going to do with the O2 sensors next and that servo harness. All right, guys, so I'm getting ready to put the air box back and get that air filter in. Um, Block-off plates are done. Um, I showed you the connector. One thing I'm going to show you is when you get the block off plates, the graves that comes with the rubber plug, one thing you need to be careful of, do not put this rubber plug on this fitting here. That's your crankcase breather. Do not mistake that. The one you want to put this on is going to be underneath and hidden right there. So that's where the hose for the pair valve plugs into. That's the one you're going to plug up. Do not plug your crankcase breather. That's not good. All right, so that's what it should look like. What I like to do is I actually like to cut those down. Uh, because you'll have a bunch of it hanging off. So I like to cut it down and get it as flush as possible. Uh, it is a tight fit, so there's no reason to really put a clamp or, you know, use a zip tie around it to keep that from popping off. It's not going anywhere. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to get the air filter in. One thing I can't stress enough is you got these three tabs, and what I do see a lot of people make the mistake is they just set this in to the air box and wonder why it's not sitting flush. As you can see, there are three spots that this is clicking in. So take the filter, come in and lock it in place. All right, and then everything should fit flush. Might fight you a little bit, don't get frustrated. All right, all right guys. So on these, these are the connectors for the O2 sensors. I went ahead and deep pinned them to make my own. Um, my last idea wouldn't work. These are a little bigger, so trying to get it to shrink wrap and seal it was not gonna work like it did on that first connector. So while these are setting up, I am gonna go ahead and install the mid pipe and get that done. One thing, like I said, the M4 mid pipe does not come with the O2 bungs to, to block those off. So I had to get these from Amazon, showed up in a couple days, had them in stock. Uh, I think they were seven or eight bucks a pop. So I'm gonna get those in, we'll get the exhaust on there and then uh, go from there. One thing I did forget to mention is do yourself a favor, um, thread chase these so that we don't worry about cross threading the O2 sensor holes up. So thread chase those, these are just, I believe, a 12 by 125 thread pitch. Um, so make sure you clean those up, get some, put some in, a little bit of anti-seize on there as well. And you're going to put some anti-seize here. That way, if you ever have to take this off, it'll definitely make things a lot easier. Or if you decide to put the O2 sensors back in, um, those plugs should come out pretty simple. Um, but this being titanium, one thing I can't stress enough is that use gloves, uh, make sure you wipe it down real good with, you know, I use suspension clean WD 40, very clean. You can use as well, but you definitely want to clean it down before you get heat into it. Because if you've got fingerprints, the grease from your hands can actually etch that in there and make the pipe look like, like caca. So just some little tips I want to share with you. All right. So got the gas tank back on exhaust is on did a final wipe down to make sure there's no fingerprints on it got the vacuum or i'm sorry the vent hoses hooked back up fuel pump harnesses hooked back up so now we're going to go ahead and do the ecu part of it so when you go through chris moore he's going to give you a sheet that tells you everything that's done so on this one you know fuel maps optimized now yeah yeah i know it's not done to you know altitude because i'm here in denver so we're mile high the O2 sensors have been eliminated, top speed limiters eliminated, <clears throat> excuse me, eliminated. Timing map optimized, exhaust servo, you know, fan temps were changed, rev limiter, you know, uh, the, all the restrictions that are in the computer. Watch his videos and he'll discuss what goes on there. You know, the uh, pair valves deleted and the D uh, cell cutoff. So this thing should pop and, and burp a little bit on the D cells, which sounds good. Um, so on this one, we're going to do the key on off for 10 seconds twice. Um, you know, and then we'll start it up and let it idle. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. And we will have a check engine light, but the good news is um, I have, you know, a cheap little scanner that I bought years and years ago when I was still turning wrenches. Got the adapter, 
Got that off Amazon like 15 bucks. So we're gonna go 10 seconds. Okay, we're gonna go off. Back on. And off. And now, I'm going to start this thing and see what she sounds like. So we'll turn it off, we'll let 10 seconds, and then I will go in and we'll clear that check engine light. One thing I want to touch on is you will get a check engine light on these on these bikes. And I'm going to kind of show as soon as you unhook the PCM. But you're, yeah, this thing's got eight codes stored, you know, throttle position, barometric pressure, coolant temp, intake temp, you know, another manifold, throttle position. What else we got? Throttle position and watchdog operation. So what that one usually is, is uh, it's probably locked it to say, hey, it's been flashed. Someone's been tampering with the ECU. So if I ever have any problems with that computer while it's still in a warranty, they may deny it. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, sorry. We're going to go ahead and clear this out. And you can get the scanner, I think, for like 30 bucks. Just shop around. You don't need anything fancy. All right, codes are cleared. Check engine light is off now. Let's go ahead and turn her off. Let's turn her back on. All right, so that's a good sign that the check engine light did stay off. Now, when I had the R7, um, Chris Moore did the ECU flash on that one as well. We did run into a little hiccup, and it makes me wonder if that particular bike was looking for a signal from the O2 sensors. Because they were disabled, but they still had to be plugged in for the check engine light to clear on that one. Kind of goofy. But let's start it up and make sure that check engine light stays off. impressed you know stock canister with that muffler box gone i think i can live with that uh, i'm gonna get her buttoned all back up get the side panels on she definitely needs a bath sorry for that guys um but if you have any questions let me know uh, i'm gonna touch on a few more things before i end this video talk to you guys right, guys and gals she is all finished um i'm gonna call this stage one got rid of all the emissions stuff you know the pair of valve x up got rid of the x up cables uh muffler box 
you know, all in all with that stock canister, I think she sounds pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. Um, keep in mind, we will be doing more videos. I got some goodies. Oh, one thing I do want to touch on when you do this block off plates on the pair valves, you'll see this is all cut out and milled out. Well, the block offs, the aftermarket ones will only have the top half. Make sure you put that top half facing upwards because there's two dowels. If you get them on backwards, they're not going to seal and you're going to have noise. You're going to tear it all back apart. That's never fun. So yeah, we got rid of that. Got rid of that. The air filter and servo motor also deleted the rear pegs and some other little stuff to try to put her on a little bit of a diet. But uh, keep watching because I'm going to be doing carbon fiber fender. Got my Pugh windscreen. Got to redo the tech specs. The vendor I bought these from sent me ones for a 15 to 19. They don't fit properly. So if anyone needs a set of 15, 19s, they're not that old. They still work. Throw me a comment. Shoot them out to you. Give them to you for free. We're going to be doing... By far, what I think is the best levers, the ASVs. Got some frame sliders we're going to be doing. Um, vortex here. And this is a must also. Adjustable rear sets. Set these up for what you're going to be doing. Also help you get more comfortable because the stock rear sets are garbage. You know, it's a one size fits all. These you can at least dial in. Take some pressure off the hips, the backs. You know, get the get everything, get your ergonomics set up properly for you. I can't stress that enough. But let me know what you guys think. You know, shoot me a message. Let me know what else you'd like to see. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the uh, section. I answer all of them. I'm not like some of those guys out there who post a video and never respond. I don't do that. So hit me up. Let me know. Talk to you guys soon.